Welcome everybody. And thank you so much for being here throughout this recording. We are going to virtually give you an actual peek under the lid of our brand new infant formula that launched very, very recently. It truly is an honor and I am so excited to introduce you guys to our new baby. Um, this is Cabrita's goat milk based infant formula. It is the first and the only European as well as goat milk based infant formula that meets all FDA requirements. Now, this truly is a big deal and we will tell you exactly what it all means. Um, I know that goat milk based infant formulas are new to the American market, so you very well might have a lot of questions and curiosities. Our goal for today is to give you all of the information to properly educate yourself, your family, and your communities. Our baby arrived on January, so just at the very beginning of this year on January 8th. So before we dive into everything, let me take a brief moment and properly introduce myself. My name is Alika. I am the Director of Medical and Scientific Affairs here at Cabrita. We are a Dutch goat milk based formula company and our products, our research, our farmers, I truly can't wait to tell you all about throughout this session. Now I have a PhD in nutritional biology. I am also a registered dietitian um, and I was born and raised in the Netherlands. So I speak Dutch and it truly is an honor that I get to bring a Dutch product to all of my fellow American families. I have the honor of co-hosting this session with Dr. Ari Brown. Now, Dr. Brown is a renowned pediatrician. You might recognize her as the author of the best-selling book called Baby 411. It's a book I personally reference almost daily for the first few months of my son's life. And Dr. Brown is our chief medical advisor who I get to work very closely with. So her and I are going to pass the mic back and forth throughout this session. Um, and with that, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So Dr. Brown, all over to you. Thanks, Alika. Next slide, please. Thanks. So I do want to just take a minute to introduce myself and tell you how I got involved with Cabrita. I have been a pediatrician in private practice for 28 years. I did my pediatric residency training at Harvard at Boston Children's Hospital, and I became very involved with the American Academy of Pediatrics and very much aligned with the evidence, practice evidence-based medicine. And my passion has really become translating um, the science to families and healthcare providers to really empower them to make science-based decisions for their child's health and help um, pediatricians and other healthcare providers translate and communicate those messages to families as well. And I became interested in Cabrita about five years ago. I was curious about their product and I realized that when they finally were going to bring this product to the United States, that this was going to be a welcome addition. And I felt like they were really doing it right. And I was excited about following them on this journey. And I'm excited that it has finally come to market. And so that's why I have been able to share this information with you, because it is now truly in our stores and available online here in the U.S. So I am going to talk a little bit about an infant feeding on a high level, and then we're going to take that deep dive, as Alika had said. But when we talk about infant feeding, just to get everybody up to speed, um, you know, as a pediatrician, I can tell you that I always recommend breast milk. Breast milk is best for babies. Um, human milk is intended for human babies, and there is absolutely no substitute for that because it's dynamic living food. And Cabrita shares that philosophy. Um, but we know that all families can't breastfeed or choose not to breastfeed. And for whatever their feeding journey is, we want families to feel confident in what they're feeding their baby with something that is as close to breast milk as possible. And that's exactly what Cabrita's product is. And so formula, just if you think about it, and a lot of people don't think of it this way, is it's food, right? Um, it's food for your baby. And so because formula is food, it is very highly regulated by the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA in the United States. And that process is a rigorous one. And if you wanna take the deep dive to read about it, um, we, do, we have the citations here, 
But the short version of this is that Cabrita has gone through this entire process to meet all of the FDA requirements for sale in the US. And what that means is that there are clinical studies that have been done that have proven that Cabrita offers complete nutrition for a baby's first year with 30 essential nutrients meeting the Infant Formula Act in the United States. And the product will be safe in its manufacturing and its shipping, and it will be a reliable and consistent supply. And when we're talking about infant formula, it, you know, it, it's a formula. And so I try to explain that to families is that it's an actual chemical formula with separate, you know, ratios. And those ratios meet what a human milk equivalent is going to be. And so when it comes to breast milk or infant formula, the ratios of the macronutrients are exactly the same. It's 50% fat. 40% carbohydrate and 10% protein. And so that specific formula is taking a base. And so that base historically in the US has been soy milk or cow milk or goat milk, um, which we're gonna talk about and modifying it to meet what the ratios and nutritional needs are that are present in human milk. And so in the United States, the FDA and the American Academy of Pediatrics now support three different types of bases to make infant formula. But prior to 2023, there were only two bases, either cow milk-based formula or soy milk-based infant formula. And so only recently in June, the FDA added goat milk-based as an equally equivalent first line product cow, goat, or soy milk-based infant formulas, all perfectly forms of acceptable nutrition. And in October of 2023, the American Academy of Pediatrics followed suit and formally endorsed goat milk infant-based formula as an acceptable option for babies first year. So we can now say that goat milk-based infant formula is pediatrician recommended. So a lot of you are probably wondering why goat milk? What's the advantage? And again, this is new to the United States. It's not new to, um, to the world globally. It's been used for a long time. And the reason why goat milk is a popular option is because goat milk at its base is actually more similar to human milk than cow milk is. So the protein composition is actually closer to human milk. It's digested more similarly than cow milk. And the oligosaccharides, which are important prebiotics and the third largest component found in human milk is actually found naturally more in diversity and numbers in goat milk than in cow milk. Alika, back to you. Thank you. I get to introduce you to Cabrita. So I'm going to introduce you to not only our brand, but also our heritage, our journey of what it took to get to the United States, our farmers, and then I'll wrap up by briefly talking about our parent company. So we're going to start at the very basics. We're going to start with the foundation, and that is our name. Our name, Cabrita, comes from the Spanish word that is spelled with a C called Cabrita, which quite literally translates to little goat. It's absolutely appropriate because we are 100% dedicated to goat milk products. It means that you're never going to see a Cabrita cow milk-based product in our portfolio. And this is something that makes us unique among other infant formula brands because we are the only goat milk formula brand that is truly dedicated to goat. The Cabrita company is headquartered in the Netherlands. So that means all of our goats are the Dutch white breed that you see here in this picture. Now this breed is called the Sanon breed. And it's also really important to call out that Cabrita, we own the entire supply chain. So we have full control of all the steps in the process, quite literally from what is happening on the farm down to what goes on and into our can. So I like this slide. It's a, it's a big slide and it highlights the journey that it took to make our goat milk based infant formula available to all of you. This was a journey that did not happen overnight. It has been a 10 year long journey. And to really understand how complex this is, we need to go all the way back to 2013, which is when the European regulatory body called EFSA first approved the use of goat milk based infant formula in 
all European countries. It was very well received. And so the next year is when our team had the first meeting with the FDA. And at this time, we, of course, wanted to find out what is it going to take to make this well-loved European product available to American families as well. Now, one of the things we found out immediately is that um, goat milk ingredients were not yet generally recognized as safe for infants in the United States. It's a massive roadblock because every ingredient that goes into an infant formula in the U.S. has to be reviewed and approved and certified as generally recognized as safe for infants by the FDA. So what our parent company did is we filed an application with the FDA for multiple goat milk-based ingredients that were going to be the foundation of our goat milk-based infant formula recipe. Now, this um, grass approval application went through in 2016. And this is something that we're really proud of because it truly paved the way for all other formula companies to also create goat milk based infant formula products in the United States. Because once a ingredient is recognized as gener generally recognized as safe, um, typically other manufacturing companies can leverage that then for their innovations as well. Now, in 2018, our Cabrita U.S. Infant Formula clinical trial was completed. This is a massive milestone, um, and it is a required part to receive FDA authorization. What happens is, as a company, you take your product, you do a full randomized clinical control trial on it, and you demonstrate to the FDA that our product is safe and supports healthy growth for infants 0 to 12 months. What is not required is that you publish this research. And in fact, many infant formula companies um, only do the research to hand it over to the FDA, but don't go that extra step. Our company really prioritizes moving the field forward as a whole. And so we have published this research and anyone can access it through PubMed. Um, so these results, of course, showcase that our recipe that is now available in the U.S. supports healthy growth, it's good tolerability, and it is safe to use in infants. Then the next step is that earlier, or not earlier this year, at the uh, in um, 2023, so last year, is when our company... Um, received the green light from the FDA. We got the formal letter from them saying, we have no further questions about your application. Therefore, we are now, um, we meet all of the Infant Formula Act requirements and are legally allowed to sell our product to American families. Now, because goat milk-based infant formula had not been an option in the US market, Prior to us receiving this green light from the FDA, the American Academy of Pediatrics had not recognized goat milk-based infant formula as an appropriate option for infants. Like Ari just talked us through, it used to really only be that the basis for infant formula in our country were cow milk or soy. That changed in October of 2023 when the American Academy of Pediatrics formally announced their support for using goat milk-based infant formulas as an acceptable source for infants zero to 12 months of age as well. And then fast forward to January 8th of 2024, our infant formula is now available to all of you. So truly a journey. I just wanna emphasize that this was not a decision that our leadership made overnight. This was certainly not a decision during the height of the 2022 infant formula crisis that we experienced in this country. Um, where Cabrita saw an opportunity. This is something that has been in the works for a decade. So to get to know Cabrita, you also really need to get to know our farmers. And I want to take the opportunity on this slide to do exactly that. All of our goats are raised on Dutch farms, and we have over a hundred family-owned goat farms that supply all of the Cabrita milk. Now, animal safety and welfare are a top priority for us, as well as for our farmers. Um, 
And in order to be a Cabrita farmer, you actually have to comply with a third party quality assurance program that is not run by us. It is actually run by the Dutch Goat Dairy Organization. And this program in Dutch, it's called Kwaligheid. It quite literally translates to Quali Goat. And it is what enables the Dutch goat farmers to provide the highest quality of goat milk available. So that's a good overview of Cabrita, but I do want to take a moment and introduce you to our parent company because everything Cabrita does is powered by Aus Nutria. And Aus Nutria is a company that has been around for a century. They have over 75 years of infant formula experience, which is an incredible thing that we are able to leverage. All of their insights and expertise in this industry is something that trickles down through Cabrita. Aus Nutria is the number one goat milk formula brand worldwide, and the products that fall within the Aus Nutria umbrella are available in more than 50 countries. So altogether, we are feeding more than one and a half million babies every single day. So while goat milk is new to the U.S., it certainly is not new globally. And this is my last slide before I pass it back to Dr. Brown, but I really want to highlight how Aus Nutria is a powerhouse for scientific research. We believe that our research should advance the field of infant feeding and of goat milk research at large. Um, and to do that, we know we can't do it alone. So certainly we're going to do things like, yeah, we're going to not just do the clinical trial that's required. We're going to publish those results as well. But we're also going to do other things like partner with renowned global infant researchers um, and organizations who together we really are able to move the needle. So I'm showing you here um, a bunch of logos, which is just some of the organizations that we are partnering with. Either we do research together with them, sometimes we fund their work, and then we take a step back to ensure that we're not have influencing anything. Um, we have over 14 peer-reviewed publications that are currently available to anyone who would like to really geek out about goat milk research. Our research colleagues are actively working on more than 10 manuscripts, so a lot more really great nerdy research we can geek out about in the near future. Um, but just as a scientist myself, this is something that I really am proud of. And I hope it showcases the dedication that our brand and team has to ensure that we're innovating based on the latest insights that are out there. Hey, Salika. All right. So we are going to take the peek under a lid, under the lid, and taking a deep dive here. Uh, and I promise we'll have fun and it won't be uh too boring. So please stay tuned here because we have some exciting news at the end. All right. So as we talked about, Cabrita is the first and only goat milk based infant formula and the only European infant formula that meets all FDA requirements for sale in the U.S. But what does that mean and why do we keep calling that out? So we already talked about what it means, which is that it meets all of the requirements as far as generally recognized as safe ingredients and the safety and the efficacy trials that have been done. So it's complete nutrition and appropriate uh, for babies to grow in their first year of life. But the difference is there are some other goat milk based infant formula products that are being sold in the US under enforcement discretion. And so that's what I wanna clarify at the start. And so um, as all of you probably are aware, we definitely had infant supply chain issues during COVID in 2021, but then things really, hit a tipping point in February of 2022 when Abbott Nutrition had a foodborne contamination event in their Michigan manufacturing plant. And literally overnight, we lost 40% of our infant formula supply in the US. And so it really exposed our vulnerability and fragility of our supply. Um, and as a reminder, that impacted about 3 million babies because 75% of infants in the United States do rely on formula, whether through supplementation or exclusively formula fed. And that's based on um, 
the CDC's breastfeeding report card. So um, the latest CDC guidance um, and results on our breastfeeding rates in the US, although we would love for all babies to be breastfed exclusively by six months of life, 75% are uh, receiving some formula. And so that's the reality. And so as a result, the government had to get very creative um, to help ensure that our babies did have some infant formula. And so they created um, a effort called Operation Fly to stabilize the nutrition for infants um, by getting Australian and European formula companies that their products met U.S. infant safety and nutrition guidelines, they were actually shipping under emergency use to the U.S. And so those products are available. They're still available in the United States. And now those companies need to go through the entire process of clinical trials and inspections to be able to continue selling their product in the U.S. So Cabrita is well ahead of that. And we have already received um, that notification that we've met all of the FDA requirements and that we'll be able to ensure a permanent and consistent supply. So another question you guys are probably wondering is what does this taste like? Um, I think a lot of people have a perception that it's going to taste goaty. Um, and I will tell you that I participated in a taste test um, and we actually did a TikTok challenge uh, where several um, medical experts did a taste test, which was super fun. Um, and I will tell you that it's actually very creamy um, and I think it tastes like milk, it's great. Um, it also, um, actually, if you look at the studies on taste tests, um, show that it has fewer off flavors um, than cow milk based infant formula. And I will also say from personal experience that it dissolves really well and it's not foamy when it's mixed. And so if you stay tuned to the end, Alika is going to share the information with you on how you can do your own taste test. And so here is our taste test um, and everybody universally loved it. All right, now the deeper dive. So we're going to talk about the macronutrients, which are fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. And we'll also talk about the micronutrients, which are vitamins and minerals. And at the top of this, I want to say that this product is absolutely for all babies. It's not just for babies who have trouble tolerating cow milk-based infant formula. And so I want to normalize it as an acceptable first choice uh, for infant feeding. And also I wanna to explain to you why it might actually be a better choice and not a fallback for babies who are just having trouble tolerating cow milk infant formula. So first let's talk about proteins. And so high level conversation about proteins is that there are two different types of proteins in all mammalian milks. So there's whey and their casein. So if you think about little Miss Muffet sitting on her tuffet eating her curds and whey, curds are casein and whey is whey. And if you think of like, if you visualize kind of what cottage cheese looks like, um, the, the liquidy part is the whey and the clumpy part would be the casein. And so whey will remain in liquid form when it goes through the gut um, to get digested. So it has a quicker transit time than casein. And then casein will actually clump or curdle. Um, and so it takes longer for a baby to digest it. And know that the ratio or the amount of whey and casein vary in different milks. And so mature human breast milk has 60% whey and 40% casein. And when you look at unmodified cow milk and goat milk, they both contain 20% whey and 80% casein. And so what Karina does is it actually modifies its formula to match human breast milk, giving that 60 to 40 whey to casein ratio. And it's important to note that Cabrita's goat milk protein gets digested more similarly to human milk than cow milk based um, protein formula. And so in that clinical trial that Alika was referring to, um, they actually looked at the whey transit time of goat milk formula. And you can see that 50% 
of the whey protein was digested within two hours. And that's similar to human milk versus the comparative product, which was the cow milk based formula, only 35% of the whey protein was digested within two hours. And so what that means is, is the faster transit time makes it easier to digest and potentially there's less constipation as a result. And finally, the casein protein composition in breast milk is also closer to goat milk than to cow milk. And this is this there's a lot on this slide, but the two key, two key takeaways that I want to kind of point out, one is that goat milk contains more beta casein, which is like human milk, and goat milk has less A1 casein than cow milk. And so the difference is in the curds. And so goat milk curds are looser and softer, whereas that A1 casein in the cow milk produces firmer curds. And so softer curds are easier to digest and produce softer poops. All right, next is the carbohydrates. So the first thing I wanna point out is that lactose is the number one sugar found in human milk, and it's also the number one ingredient in our formula. The other key carbohydrate, which I had talked about earlier, um, in human milk is oligosaccharides or prebiotics. And so they are the third largest ingredient in human milk behind fat and lactose. And that high volume and diversity supports maturation of the gut and the immune system. And so in short, they feed the microbiome, which is important. And goat milk naturally has five times more oligosaccharides in it compared to cow milk. And it's also greater in diversity. So why do we care about this? Again, that those prebiotics actually result in softer stools. And then it also supports the developing gut and the immune system. And then we're gonna talk about fats. And so fats are a critical nutrient to support brain and vision development, as well as a variety of other essential functions. And the structure and the composition of those fats impact the absorption of the fat. And so mature human breast milk at six months has a, has a variety of fats, as you can see on this slide, but specifically it contains about 20 to 25% palmitic acid which supports fat and mineral absorption like calcium and also intestinal function. And so adding palmitic acid to formula is important for that reason, but it's also complicated. And so I wanna just take a step back and explain something here that will make the rest of these slides clearer. All infant formulas use a variety of vegetable oils in their fat blends. And so palm oil is a buzzy, buzzy ingredient that's used in some infant formulas to approximate that human milk palmitic acid. And Cabrita deliberately uses a modified fat called SN2 beta palmitate. Okay, so here's the quick organic chemistry lesson. So please stay with me here, all right? Um, all fats have this configuration. It's like a three-pronged fork with a glycerol handle, and then you've got these three little prongs, okay? And when a fat gets digested, digestive enzymes break down these little fatty acid prongs. And the first and the third position will actually be digested and pop off. And the, the one in the middle, the middle fatty acid stays attached to the glycerol. And so in the case of palmitic acid or palmitate, there's two different configurations that are important. There's POP, which is SN1, and OPO, which is SN2. And human milk is primarily OPO or SN2, and that's what Cabrita has in it. And that's important because palm oil is SN1 or POP. And so again, when you're looking at those three prongs, the pop, the peas in the first and the third position are gonna pop off in the digestive process. And that leaves 
free palmitic acid floating around. And when it's floating around freely, it will actually bind to calcium and create soaps. The soaps are not dangerous, but they're not as a, they're not absorbed as well. And so it gets pooped out as does some of the fat. So there's less fat absorption and less calcium absorption as a result. And that's why palm oil is potentially problematic. And so it can impact bone density, nutrition, and as well as poop consistency. And so by comparison, the SM2, the OPO position, breast milk has better calcium absorption and better fat absorption. And that same holds true with the Cabrita product because that's what we're using. So Cabrita specifically uses OPO or SN2 or beta palmitate, I know it's confusing, um, in their fat blend to more closely resemble breast milk. And the results are you have better calcium absorption, better fat absorption, which leads to better bones and better poops. Um, and you also have a better microbiome, which can lead to less crying and slightly longer sleep duration based on the studies that um, Alika has already referenced. All right, and then finally, when it comes to fat, DHA and ARA. And so all um, European formulas, so the EU actually requires these ingredients um, in their infant formulas. And most US formulas do contain DHA and ARA because they do support um, eye and brain development as well as skin and muscle development. Um, but the ratios are not required. Um, and so Cabrita, follows the evidence and has more ARA than DHA, which is um, superior for outcomes. And so finally, I want to show you the micronutrients that a lot of people have questions about. Um, when people think about goat milk, they think, oh, there's not enough folic acid in it. Um, and that is true. But remember, when you're making a formula, you're using it as a base. And while we don't recommend giving goat milk to a baby. We also don't recommend giving cow milk to a baby either. They've been modified to meet the nutritional needs for babies. And so Cabrita meets all of the 30 essential nutrients that are required in the Infant Formula Act, including folic acid, as well as iron and vitamin D. And remember that lactose is the first ingredient and that it has a 60 to 40 weight to casein ratio. And then it's very rich in the galacto-oligosaccharides, which are those prebiotics. And there's actually some that's even added beyond what's found naturally in the goat milk product, because that is such an important ingredient. And back to you, Alika. <laughs> Thank you. That was a lot of information, including a mini OCHEM crash course that you might not have been expecting. Um, but I hope it was the perfect balance of geeky yet digestible Pun, of course, very much intended. Um, hopefully you learned something new. I am going to take the opportunity on this slide to summarize everything that we just learned from Ari and overlay that with a competitive landscape chart so that you get a sense of where our new infant formula lands compared to other infant formula markets, other infant formula products on the market. Um, what you see here right away is that there are two other goat milk based infant formulas available to US families. However, it is really important to call out that Cabrita is the only infant formula, goat milk based infant formula that meets all FDA requirements. So those last two columns on this chart are showing you the other goat milk based infant formulas that are currently here through the enforcement discretion which was um, part of the, the problem solving during 2022 when we were in the height of the infant formula crisis. And President Biden signed Operation Fly Formula to bring foreign infant formulas over to our families. Now, most of our competitors are not nearly as rooted in science and research as we are when it comes to publishing research that actually includes the infant formula product. We are the only goat milk based infant formula company who does that. And even among our cow milk based infant formula competitors, you see that this is not the norm. We're very proud of the ratio of whey to casein that we're able to offer. 
Um, and this is, of course, that 60 to 40 ratio that Dr. Brown talked us through. Our ratio is what mimics what you'll find in mature breast milk. So a few weeks after baby is born. This is not the case for all of our cow milk-based infant formula competitors. Um, and then looking at the composition of breast milk, Dr. Brown was sharing that prebiotics or those oligosaccharides actually make up, they're the fourth largest um, ingredient found in breast milk. So that says a lot to me already. Of course, then when we look into the science, we see that from a scientific and health benefit perspective, this, this ingredient is really important. Um, so we are very proud to have the highest amount of prebiotics in our product among our competitor set. Those prebiotics, like Ari just mentioned, a portion of those come from the prebiotics that are naturally occurring in goat's milk. Remember, goat milk for goat milk um, has five times more of these prebiotics than cow milk. Because these prebiotics are so important, we also add additional oligosaccharides to our product. And if you look at the small numbers on this chart, you see that we are adding the most prebiotics out of our competitors, if it's in there at all. Um, then let's quickly talk about arachidonic acid, AKA ARA, as well as docosa hexanoic acid, which is often known as DHA. These omega fatty acids are really important, but not only is it important to include them, it is also important to keep in mind the ratio between the two that you add. Looking at the scientific research, it is very clear that there is a benefit by adding more ARA than DHA. So we have absolutely taken that into consideration and meet that scientific recommendation. Um, not all of the goat milk infant formula products on the market meet that ratio guidelines. And um, amongst our cow milk competitors, some of that information is not publicly available. Then, of course, SN2 palmitic acid, that fatty acid that Dr. Brown gave you a great overview on. We are the only infant formula that includes that in high amounts. The science is clear. There are a lot of health benefits for using um, palmitic acid in this um, composition, and we're very proud to be able to offer that. And then, of course, we have to talk about costs, right? That's going to be a determining factor. Where we fall is we are right on par with the other goat milk infant formulas available to the U.S. families. We're actually coming in cheaper than the premium cow milk-based infant formulas that are also an option. We talked a lot about scientific publications. I do want to take a quick moment and talk about some other publications. There's been a lot of buzz about goat milk-based infant formula in the last few months and weeks. A great article is this Forbes article where... The title says a lot. Pediatricians are now recommending goat milk formula for infants. It's a fantastic read. If you haven't read it and you still have questions or curiosities about goat milk infant formula, I highly recommend that. Separately, I want to quickly point out the healthychildrens.org blog. Healthychildrens.org is run by the American Academy of Pediatrics, and they have a great article where they explain that goat milk-based infant formulas are an appropriate option for U.S. infants. And we just want to end with a big, big, big thank you. Um, I know we spent a lot of time together just now. Should you have any additional questions, thoughts, ideas you want to bounce off of us, our medical expert team is always here for you. You can reach us at nutrition at cabrita.ca and you will hear back from one of us very promptly. Thank you. Thank you.